Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss five questions in about 10 minutes, and I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. This is David Mead. He is a speaker, an author, and founder of the company Propel out of Alpine, Utah. David, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. What would you, what would you like the audience to know about uh, Propel and what you do? Um, I mean, if I had to put it into into a little short, short version, I am so passionate about helping people have a meaningful, positive experience at work. Uh, Most of us spend most of our time at work and too many of us hate our jobs. And so it's, you know, how do we, how do we create uh, work as part of a meaningful human experience for us? I love that. And I completely agree. There's a lot of work that we can do to improve that. So yeah, (laughs) that's fantastic. All right. Well, let's jump to our questions then. Our first question, share with the audience a time where you struggled with a coworker and how you resolved it. Um, You know, not a whole lot of those times pop into my head, but there's one specific uh, instance that I remember. It was about six years ago or so. I was, um, I was on a team a small team. We were mostly remote, but we got together for a, an offsite in Aspen. Um, and my dear friend, Peter, who was on the team uh, with me, we were asked to co-facilitate a, a workshop for half a day for our team on some content. And so he and I would go back and forth, obviously, and share different parts of the of the content. And I noticed that um, every time after I got done sharing my piece, he would get up and I'd never experienced this uh, from him before, but he would, you know, go off for another two, three, four, five minutes on the stuff that I had just talked about. Uh, and I, at first, I didn't think about it, but it happened every single time that I had finished my portion. And so it really started to sort of mess with my confidence and, you know, make me wonder, like, does he not think I'm capable of talking about this stuff? Does he, what am I missing something? And I found myself actually just sharing less because I knew that he was going to come and share more after anyway. And it, it sort of caused a bit of a rift in our relationship, honestly. And I, I it, it just, I, I, I wasn't comfortable around him for the, the next day or two that we were at this retreat. Uh, and the way that I resolved that is I said something, uh, which I think is sometimes really difficult to do, especially when we don't know a, a coworker well, or, you know, we don't have that relationship. I happen to have a great relationship with Peter, which helped, I think. Um, but I had to bring it up and rather than making it about him, I made it about me and how I felt and the experience that I had. Um, and I found that that's, that's one of the things when we have a miscommunication or when we have a tough sort of conversation that we need to have, rather than pointing the finger and making it about the other person, how do I make it about me and my experience and what I'm feeling and what I experience? Because that sounds, that comes across less accusatory, if you will. That's a great way to look at it. And that's a great insight because a lot of times we, uh, we do tend to kind of point the finger a little bit. And so if we can own that up a little bit and uh, kind of say, you know, those are whatever you may say, but is there something I'm doing or whatever it may be, then you're right. It does come far less uh, accusational. That was a great comment. I really like that. Thanks. Well, question number two, you've heard the phrase, of course, that people don't leave jobs, they leave managers. What's one suggestion that you would offer to help leaders retain their employees a little bit longer than they might otherwise? This is such a topical thing right now with so many people leaving their jobs just in record numbers, right? I mean, we have not seen it like this in in years, um, if ever. Um, This is one of the big things that I talk about, which is, I, I think one of the biggest things that a leader can do is treat their people like a human being. When somebody feels like they belong, when they feel like they're a part of something, when they feel like somebody genuinely cares about who they are and the work they do and shows them that it's valuable and that they're valued, that's what gets people to stick around. And I think there's, you know, I mean, we certainly have to be competitive on pay and, you know, uh, all the other, the other things that people are looking for. But I mean, if that's all we're providing, people are going to continue to bounce from one place to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, I think when there's that personal connection, when there's that, again, that sense of, wow, somebody genuinely cares that I'm here. They know my name, they know what I'm doing, and they care not only about my output, but also about what goals do I have? What's the next step for me? Uh, you know, what do I want to get out of this job or out, out of my career? Those are the kind of things that make culture sticky. 
That's a great comments. Great comments. That human experience at work. Boy, that's such a, you're right, such a hot topic right now and so needed. So that was some great insights. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Question number three, how can leaders build resilience in a team? One of the, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me is we're much more resilient and we're much more uh, able to put up with, you know, challenges and roadblocks and all these things that sort of stand in our way when the thing that we're working toward matters to us. Mm. And I think one of the things that organizations can always do more of is to remind people, where are we going? Uh, where are we headed? What, what, why does the work that you do matter? Not from the perspective of because it's going to make our company more money, because that's not inspiring to anybody. Um, and although it's important, that, let, let me not you know, discount the fact of the importance of being able to make sure. money and keep that engine running. Um, but in balance with that is what matters about the work that we're doing? What's the difference that we're making with our product or service? Or um, even if the product or service isn't the thing that that gives that meaning, how are we interacting with each other? What's the kind of culture that we're building? What kind of environment are we creating for people to come to work and have this experience? When people are, can tie their work or tie their the, the time or energy or effort that they're putting into something to something bigger, that builds resilience. Then all of a sudden it's worth it. And we don't just give up because it's hard or because we've run into this challenge or into this roadblock. Um, and so I think that resilience really uh, is bolstered when we have a clear understanding of where we're going and how we personally connect to it. That's a great insight. That really is good, David. We have a lot of folks that do get detached from the purpose of what they're doing. And that is such a, boy, that, that was really good to talk about how we need to connect with that and keep that passion going, not just for us, but for the team. And I think even, I mean, now it's even more important because with so many people working remotely, that sense of isolation and what am I, I mean, like, yeah, I can do the, the list of, of check boxes and the tasks and the, the stuff that I have to do every day, but people who felt disconnected from the purpose before are feeling even more disconnected from it now because they don't have that culture anymore. The culture has gotten watered down. They, they, it's harder to remember how, what I'm doing behind my computer all day long fits into the bigger picture. Great comments. Absolutely agree. Question number four, is there an experience that you'd like to share of someone who made a difference in your life? Yeah. Um, I mean, there have been so many, but the the one in a work context, especially the one that always comes to mind is uh, the boss that I had. It wasn't my first job. It was probably, I think it was my second, my second job. It was uh, just out of high school. Um, I worked at a bagel shop and it is the job that I compare every other single job or, or, or um, entrepreneurial venture that I've ever done to that. And back then I didn't have the, didn't have the words for it. I didn't know what was so special about it, but um, it was the kind of place that I couldn't wait to go to work. And when I got done with my shift, I would stick around and talk to the people that were still working. We would spend time together outside of work. Um, but this guy, um, we'll call him Ben, he just did such an incredible job of making everybody feel like their work mattered. It sounds a little over the top for a bagel shop, but he set that tone of, you know, empowerment and, you know, you can figure this out and I'm not going to give you the answer to everything. And, you know, he, he just sort of had this way about him that really influenced the way, not only that I experienced the job, but in the, the, the influence, the way that I think about what great leaders are and how they show up. That's really impressive that somebody in what might be considered a, a mundane routine job like a bagel shop, and yet he, he manages to help instill a sense of this matters and this is important. Mm-hmm. I think that's fantastic. Great story. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. Sure. All right. Our last question. Tell us a little bit about your first job. And it sounds like it might be the bagel shop, but I don't know. So I'll ask anyway. <laughs> well, the I mean, the very first job I had, I was sweeping floors at a grocery store. Um, there, not a lot really super special about that, um, but I... I because it was almost the first job, I will say a little bit more about that that bagel shop job and sort of the the follow on to that, right? So, um, you know, I I, I was no, under no delusion that it was going to be a, a career path for me, right? Um, but still, I, I I mean, I stayed there for a year or so, and then the 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 shop got bought out by a national chain, and Ben he ended up leaving and starting a sit down restaurant, um, and I followed him 
um, and ended up working with him for another four years uh, at that place, having much the same experience that I had at the bagel shop. And the interesting follow-up to that is I still, it's still around. Um, it's, it's, and I, and I go back fairly often. There are still at least three, if not four people who are still there wow. 20 something years later, who could have obviously left to go work at, you know, any other restaurant and may, maybe make more money, who knows. But I think it's just such a testament of the kind of place that he creates and the type of environment that he creates that people don't leave. Um, very literally for 20 years, they have made a career of working for him at his restaurant. And of course, people will still come and go. But no matter the duration of time that people stay, it's the same experience for everyone. And it's, I have to believe that he is probably the best boss that a lot of people have ever had. That's impressive. That's really impressive. That is great. David, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. How can people find you? Uh, and go to my website, davidjmead.com, or I'm on uh, LinkedIn at David J. Mead. Find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at DM Propels. Very good. Thank you. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more information and for more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a great day. Thanks, Sean.